Hey everybody, in this video I want to show you how you can add an AI to your game, like ChatGPT, Google Gemini, DeepSeek, Grok. Uh, and not only can you do it, it might be easier than some of you might realize. It's pretty simple. This is not a tutorial video, I'm not going to be showing you how to do it, uh, in this video at least. But, uh, I can do another video if y'all would like me to. So, I'm going to demonstrate how it works. So, this is a multiplayer online game. So I do have a server, I do have a client. You don't need a server, you don't need this to be multiplayer. This is just a game I've been working on. You can find out about it in the description of this video or x.com slash wizardy. But I do have a chat and this is where I put the AI. So I'm gonna say, hey Leon, which is the name of the chat bot, are you there? And so it's gonna take a second and he's gonna reply. Clear throat, you, you know, I kinda gave him a little personality and I've been tweaking around with it. But he says, hey there, buddy. Yes, I'm here. Just busy colonizing Mars. And uh, yeah, so uh, where are you at right now? I misspelled it. But anyway, you can see it's clearly working. And I'm using Google Gemini for this because uh, it's free. Uh, but you can use ChatGPT. You can use any AI that has an API. So you can see it's clearly working. It's working in the chat. And the sky is the limit for the ideas uh, that are, you know, for what is possible with doing this in your game. You can have NPCs that use this. You can use it for gameplay. There is so much you can do putting AI in your game. And like I said, it's pretty, it's not as hard as you'd think. I can do a tutorial video if you guys would like. You just need to let me know in the comments. So let me show you kind of what's going on under the hood. Uh, we're going to go to our Blobulous 3 server, which is the name of the game. And I have an AI manager here, this object. And I'm not going to show you all the scripting. It's a lot. Uh, it doesn't have to be a lot, but for this, it's a lot. Uh, but I have an API key, which is, you know, I, I, it's kind of in another object because I don't want you to see that on a video. Uh, then, you know, these variables are named weird because this is like a, my first prototype, but this is kind of his personality. So you give him like a system prompt here. Uh, and then there's just some random variables. There's his response text and... Uh, I, I was testing this out by pressing space, so anyway, all, you know, none of this really uh, is coherent right now, but there's his, the, the bot name, and uh, what, really what it's using is an async HTTP event, okay? And so, uh, you know, it's sending uh, kind of an event here, uh, or rather request, using the AI API's URL with your API key, uh, and then out of that, it's kind of uh, has this little processing script, uh, and, it, and it's going to return a, a struct that you can, that has a bunch of data, which includes the response from the uh, from the AI. Am I speaking English? So let me kind of show you a kind of an easier uh, example here. So this is another project that I've been working on. This is just where I've been playing around with different AIs. I, I even got like image generation to work. So I'm going to click space. It says AI will respond here. I'm going to click space, and it's going to send a prompt. It's going to return uh, the response. And in the output window here, you can kind of see more of what's going on. So when the AI responds to GameMaker, it's, this is the raw response right here. It's sending a struct. And you can see right here under text is the actual text reply, which is what you're going to want to work with in most cases, but then it's going to send you a bunch of other information. Um, so, you know, you kind of got to parse this out. So, you know, I, I could do a tutorial on how to do all this. It looks intimidating, but if you know anything about structs, you know, you just kind of grab that. Um, so, yeah, let's see. We have our create event. Uh, I have our API key. I have a base URL, so you'd have to, like, go sign up at Google Gemini. I have a user prompt, so the prompt we sent was tell me a joke. Um, then we have the AI response variable, which is drawn out in our draw event. Uh, we have a key press space event, and this is where a lot of the magic is happening as far as um, sending the, uh, the, the prompt and kind of just building this little uh, thing that we're going to need to actually send the prompt because you have to even set you can't just send text to the AI like when you're using chat GPT you send a struct and then you um, turn it into JSON 
and that's what you're going to actually send as an HTTP request. And then you're going to receive that back in your async HTTP event, and that's where you're going to parse out. Um, you, you're going to actually parse, you know, out your, your what the AI sends you back. So I'm kind of struggling to explain it because I don't want this to be a super long video, but I did just want to show you that this is super possible, very doable. You can copy my code if you want, um, but anyway, tell me what you think. Isn't that this is like pretty sweet, right? Think about all the use cases for this. You could make so many games implementing AI. You could have an AI playing like chess or cards with you. Or who knows, you could have like, um, you know, just NPCs with a personality. Um, pretty cool, right? So anyway, leave a comment. Let me know what you would use AI in your game for. And like, subscribe. Go follow me on xx.com slash wizardy and join my Discord. Uh, I'm pretty active on that. So that's all. 